Hey, welcome back to Anti-Chef Cooks the World. I'm Jamie and I'm not a chef, but I'm teaching myself how to cook. And you know, I like to make foods that I never made before. And this series is about me trying to make foods from all over the world, uh, every single country. All of them. Firstly, I'm gonna start with the country that I'm from and the one that I'm standing in right now, which is Canada. I'm gonna make some Canadian poutine today. Now, if you know and love poutine, then maybe, possibly, I don't know, you had a really fun night one time and you had a couple wobbly pops and you were, well, either that night or the day after when you weren't feeling great, you, you had a hankering for some french fries that were covered in cheese curds and hot gravy. You scarfed it down. Uh, maybe you did that, or is just me that did that a couple times. Canada is very multicultural, so a lot of food is influenced by many different countries as well as the local indigenous people, and it's also very much based on like the geography of the country you know east coast lobster west coast salmon in between you have montreal bagels and butter tarts and uh, i made nanaimo bars last episode the word you don't hear too often is canadian cuisine honestly i didn't even know what canada's national dish was until just now when i looked it up and yes from some random survey 51 percent of the people say it is poutine now I have a little practice making french fries because I was living in Belgium for a year. I was using a Dutch potato when I was over there, but today we're using russet. So I want the skin on today, so I'm not gonna peel them, but I am gonna wash them. Okay, these had to be scrubbed because there was dirt on them. Cut these in half and then of course, I need a bowl, which I'm gonna fill up with cold water. Just into the standard french fry shape. I'm not really doing any measurements today. It's poutine. You've eaten french fries, you know the shape. Yeah, my french fry shape for today. And then into the bowl. These are gonna hang out in this bowl of water for like half an hour so that the starch washes off them. Uh, I mean, you could do longer than half an hour if you wanted to, but today I don't wanna wait around, so yeah. And now we're gonna move on to the gravy. Oh, shit. So I have a problem, I have a big problem. I don't have any butter for my gravy. Thing is that I'm in a very remote area right now that's not close to any sort of store to buy butter. So what we got here, we got sour cream, Philadelphia cream cheese, ranch dipping sauce, whipped cream. I don't have butter, but I have accidentally made butter in the past by over whipping heavy cream. And I have heavy cream because of the Nanaimo bar episode, so why not use this and try to make butter? Is it possible? Okay, so we're in problem solving mode. Great. I have about three quarters of this carton left of heavy cream. I'm gonna add that into this bowl. What I gotta do is whip this cream for as long as I think I can, uh, like well past the stiff peak phase, and it has to like start turning into something that more resembles butter, but there'll also be like some sort of like liquid in there, which I think is buttermilk. Then you strain the liquid from the clumpy part, and then you put it all together, and then voila, butter. I don't even know if it's gonna work, but if it does, it's probably gonna take some time. Get comfortable. It's been like 20 minutes, it's starting to change color. Solid mass here in the liquid. Uh, it's like buttermilk and butter. And it's like turned color into what, you know, the butter color. So it's like about a half an hour detour. Probably would have taken the same amount of time to go to the store, pick up the butter, come back. But uh, now I know how to make butter, so. Let's go to the stove. Medium heat. Okay, this is probably around Hopefully between four and six tablespoons, which is what I need. I'm just gonna add all of it. Hopefully it melts the way butter should melt. Oh, it is, perfect. Once the homemade butter shout out is foaming, I'm going to add a quarter cup of flour 
Whisk that in. A liter of beef stock. Don't spill it. Whisk that in. A little bit of ketchup, but I don't have, I don't have any ketchup. About half a teaspoon of ketchup. If you had two tablespoons, use that. If you have Worcestershire, 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 Worcestershire sauce, you would add it now, but uh, I don't have it and I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. Three tablespoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of water. Mix this till it becomes a slurry. Turn up the heat and whisk it until it reaches a boil. Slowly add the slurry into the gravy. Continue to stir so it doesn't clump up. Keep stirring, don't let it clump. I hate when slurries clump. Just a little bit of salt. I mean, it's already salty because of the beef stock, but just a little bit. Turn the heat down to low and I'm gonna let this simmer for 15 minutes. And we're back to the fries. Drain the water. Why don't you just do it over the sink? Give this very thorough wash with cold water. Fries onto the towel. We gotta dry these. Of course, a cooking oil, vegetable oil, sunflower oil. Uh, you cook it in beef fat for all I care. Um, I'm gonna be using corn oil. It needs to be something that can sustain the high heat. Back to the stove. Add the oil. That's probably not deep enough. Switch the pots, because that's not gonna be deep enough. Filled this pot up with a few inches of oil and there's enough space in there just in case the oil starts to rise and overflow. It's not gonna burn the house down. I've had a couple close calls. When I was living in Belgium, I really wanted to perfect as close as I could the Belgian French fries that I was eating out in the street. So I, I have this recipe that I like to follow when I make French fries at home. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my Belgian French fry recipe for my Canadian poutine. So the oil needs to be a temperature of 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which I don't have a thermometer here, so I'm gonna use stub of the wooden spoon. If bubbles start to form around it, then we're good to start. Off to the side baking dish, line it with some paper towel. And you're gonna start adding the french fries. Keep rotating them, you don't want them to stick together. So after around seven minutes, has it been seven minutes? Seven minutes or something, yeah. After around seven minutes, these things look good, take them out on the paper towel on the baking dish. So we're not done with frying these uh, fries. They need to be double fried. That's where they get their crispiness. That's where they get their golden color to them. So I'm just gonna put this off to the side. Uh, it needs to cool. Actually, why don't I cool it the Canadian way? Yes. While we're in the middle of things, let me just introduce you to my cheese curds. So what this is, is just like young cheddar. Before it turns into actual cheese, like it's like halfway between milk and cheese, this is what this is. It's like cheese that hasn't come together yet. It's illegal in some countries because of the bacterial culture in it. Ah, I see, see, cause like ch cheddar cheese has been aged for 60 days or more and it kills the bacteria. While well, this has the bacteria in it. It's not poutine without cheese curds. Keep it in the fridge. Crank the heat, it's gonna be around like 370, 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Add the fries and I'm gonna keep them in there for like two to three to four minutes until they look the color I want them to look. I don't like a potato-y French fry. I like them nice and crispy. French fries are golden brown and ready to go. Bowl. Fries, salt, fries on the bottom, cheese curds on top. As many cheese curds as I want. I like it cheesy. The gravy's been sitting long enough so that there's like a film on top. I'm just gonna pass it through a fine sieve. Poutine from Canada truly is a thing of beauty. If you've never had it before and you're not lactose intolerant, I urge you to try it. Uh, it is ooey, gooey, 
comfort on a plate. to the Canadian pub in London, the Maple Leaf, and they claimed to serve poutine. And it was chips, like the way they do it in there, with just sh shredded processed cheese on it. Yeah, not the curds. Yeah. It it's was, a sin. It was uh, blasphemous, and I was so offended. I left. Yeah. Cheap. Cheap knockoff. Also, it's spreading a false kind of image of what poutine is around the world. Like, no, it's not shredded cheese. Need the curds. It's my story. <laughs> that about wraps up Canadian cuisine. We'll be back next time with a food from another country. Uh, if you see a country coming up on this list and you have a great recipe that you'd like to share, comment down below with what it is and that will actually help me decide what I'm gonna make next. But that's all I got. I'll see you very soon. Cheerio.